Hello everyone. I am Dr. Asha Yetiraj, Professor in Audiology, working at the All India Institute of Speech and Hearing, located in Mysore. At this institute, various services are provided for those with communication problems. One such service is the rehabilitation of those with hearing impairment through the use of cochlear implants. Through this video, I would like to provide information regarding cochlear implants mainly for those individuals who are using hearing aids and or for their caregivers. Information is provided regarding different cochlear implant companies, parts of the devices and styles that are available. Cochlear implants from three main companies are frequently recommended in India, although there are other companies that manufacture them. These three companies include Advanced Bionics of USA, Nucleus Implant System of Australia, and Metal from Austria. Until quite recently, devices from Neuralic Cochlear Implant, which was bought over by Oticon Medical UK, were also recommended in the country. A lesser known cochlear implant from China is also reported to be available. It is advisable that an audiologist with specific training in cochlear implants be consulted before a particular company is chosen. Although there are differences in the devices provided by these companies, the overall working of the devices is similar. A cochlear implant has two parts, an external part and an internal part. The inner part of the cochlear implant has to be surgically inserted by an ENT surgeon who has undergone special training to do so. After a few weeks, the surgical cut or the incision heals and an audiologist switches on the device. Now let us look at how the cochlear implant works once it is switched on by an audiologist. Sound is picked up by the microphone located in the external part which is also called the speech processor. The auditory signal is converted into electrical signals and the speech processor codes them to be transmitted to the inner part. The signal from the speech processor is sent to the inner part of the cochlear implant through a transmission coil using radio frequency signals. The transmission coil is held in place behind the ear of a person through the use of a magnet. The inner part, also called the implant, has a magnet which attracts the magnet of the transmission coil and keeps it in place behind the ear. The radio frequency signals picked up by the inner part are again converted to electrical signals and are sent to the tiny electrodes that are placed in the snail shaped part of the inner ear. From these electrodes, the electrical signals are sent through the auditory nerve to the brain where they are heard as sound. Like any other listening device, a cochlear implant requires a power supply for it to work. Most cochlear implant processors make use of rechargeable batteries. They can be charged in a similar way as it is done for mobile phones. Within each company, a variety of models are available. These models differ both in the internal component, that is the implant, as well as the external part, that is the speech processor. The speech processors vary in terms of the features that they offer as well as the styles to which they can be worn. Some of the available devices have features to enhance listening in the presence of noise and be, can be connected to external devices like the television or phone and this is done via Bluetooth. While most speech processors are designed to be worn behind the ear, a few companies also offer devices that are worn off the ear. It is wise to take the advice of an audiologist to decide about the model or style of speech processor. The audiologist will help you select the device based on your or your child's listening requirements, the sturdiness of the device, the support received from the company or the after-sales services, as well as your budget. 
the audiologist will also help decide whether cochlear implant should be worn in both ears or in one ear. It should be remembered that multiple audiological and non-audiological tests are required to be done to decide whether your child is a candidate for cochlear implants. A team of specialists will work together to make this decision. Choosing the model of the internal part of the device is done by an ENT surgeon. Although it is trained professionals who decide whether you or your child is a candidate for cochlear implants, I will explain about a very simple test that you can do at home to decide whether a cochlear implant is required. The test is called Ling's Six Sound Test. Although the test only checks six speech sounds, it gives an idea whether all the speech sounds in the low, mid or high frequencies can be heard. The speech sounds that are used are M, mm. A, E, U, SH and S and these should be spoken in a random order. You can see in the picture shown as to how each of the six sounds have different frequencies which will give an idea as to whether all the sounds can be heard. The speech sounds should be spoken in a normal way by a person standing about three feet behind the individual wearing hearing aids. The person wearing hearing aids should either repeat the sounds if his or her speech is clear or point to the script or pictures representing the speech sounds. Each ear should be tested separately. It should be noted that if an individual is not getting adequate benefit from hearing aids, it is wise to consult an audiologist to get to know if a cochlear implant is required. I hope this information in this video is useful for you. Please note the pictures of cochlear implants that have been reproduced in this video have been done so with the permission of the companies.